Well, it is a pleasure to be chatting with Jennifer English. Welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. I'm good. Uh, a little, like, good overwhelmed by the last couple of weeks. It, I was going to say, you... it's uh, it's been a lot, hasn't it? It's been a lot. <laughs> um, look, I knew it would be a big deal. And Neil, who played Astarian, took me aside at one point. I can't remember when down the line. It was just like, you do know this game is going to be a big deal. And I was like, Neil, what you want about? It's just <laughs> this little game we're doing. Um, no, I never thought it was a little game. I knew it was going to be a big game, but yeah. um, yeah, it turns out I really should have should have listened to listened to dear old Neil. <laughs> not old. You're not old, Neil. I'm sorry for saying old. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's been incredible. I, I like the reviews are nuts, aren't they? I haven't seen anything yes. like it in a in a long while. Actually, I was going to say, the last time a game reviewed this well was Elden Ring, which you were in as well. <laughs> <laughs> so we're finding the key component, I think. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, a Shadow Hearts um, story. Well, it depends on which path you go down. Um, Paul Latena in Elden Ring, she had, she had a rough time of it. Very yeah. useful, though, if you bring her along. Yeah, true. Very, very good, very good in a fight. Did you play Elden Ring? Ring? Look, Dan, <laughs> we had a we had a cast party, and there was there was which was very fun, and there was a big screen and some controllers and the game, and I tried. Have you tried <laughs> playing it? It's really hard. Yeah, I'm, tough I am game. that person yeah. who just runs into walls and gets lost. <laughs> And and it's very easy to get lost in Elden Ring. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's one where you I'm too incompetent. You have to look up your work on YouTube, I think, for that one. <laughs> Reddit will help you through. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. so Elden Ring was your first game, right? No, no. No. Um, I do believe no, Divinity. Divinity. Divinity, sorry, Divinity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, which was many moons ago and I got chucked royally in the deep end it was really one of those oh you've you're in and you've got 30 characters go um what ac accents can you do can you play a skull can you play a chest um yeah I think I think I did about 70 I worked out so you can find me all over <laughs> I've never seen a clip of myself in the game so I don't, I, I can't remember all of the characters that I played. So, um, yeah, but I'm Sweet. there a lot. You reckon you played over 70 in the end? Yeah, in the end, Shit. yeah. Yeah, wow. lots of children. And I think there was one point where I was talking to myself, like I was playing one child and then another <laughs> child. I don't know whether they kept that or they recast me. I hope they got another actor in. No, I hope, they, I hope they didn't. I want to hear that. Me chatting to myself, <laughs> a little lonely, a little lonely, Jen. What? What's your? Um, do you get lots of children roles? Um, I used to, less so now. Although saying that, I just did um uh, an amazing game called Harmony: Full of Reverie, where I play this. I mean, she's got a child voice, but she's like this ageless deity, obviously. Um, and <laughs> yeah, so so that was. That was another child to add to my roster. That sounds dodgy. <laughs> Don't keep that. And it's oh, a... <laughs> dangerous territory there that I played in a video game. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I've been playing children as an adult. I mean, my first job out of drama school was playing um, one of the kids in the railway children, which was very wholesome of me, I must say. Um, yeah, playing an eight-year-old when I was 21 and partying hard because that's what you do when you're 21. So you'd find me like in the uh, pub afterwards with a giant pipe, having uh, just gone like, where's the train, Bobby? <laughs> uh, oh, wow. So, yeah, it's nice, it's nice playing Shadowheart who has a little bit more gravitas, um, to uh, say the least. So how have you, how have you been processing Shadowheart and Baldur's Gate 3 for the last few weeks? 
because it has been a whirlwind and I'm guessing you're not used to this sort of attention, are you, really? No. I mean, I get a lot of attention from my girlfriend on a day-to-day basis, but uh, she, she's very attentive. But this is this is something else. It's <laughs> wonderful um, and I'm sure like a lot of lot of the actors on this game will feel the same way but it's so wonderful we've been doing this for so long well four mm. years of our lives and like for Shadowheart really she really hit something deep within me um in a way that I don't think a character has really hit me this hard before and for like personal reasons but also I think John Corker and the writer like it's next level and and got to depths of human well half elf but you know what I mean emotion and um and it it just it meant so much and of course you do it in isolation and you work with these incredible directors from like I mean it was mostly Aliona the performance director but I worked with um, loads of voice directors as well who were amazing um Beth Park and Tilly Steele um mainly but like loads of others as well and you know we really fought and um as in fought hard to like get this like truth out of the character and and to make sure that we were honoring her story but you kind of do it and then you know you go well this might affect a couple of people and that's all, you know, that's all we'll want is just for a couple of people for it to resonate with. And now getting messages every day, really, from people that have been so emotionally affected by it and and by her story and have like, and it's like, it's helped some people through stuff and it's it's made people feel seen in certain ways and all the things that happened to me when I was recording it it's now happening to others and like there's like there's a feeling of like almost like response is it responsibility the right word I'm not sure but like Mm. it's like this collective thing that I I have felt that I'm now sharing like that we're all sharing with other people and my brain is just doing that at all times, but it's it's one of the most beautiful experiences I've ever had because I suppose it's like the art we've made. And I love that that's come from a video game and that people are, are spending hundreds of hours with us and and just feeling so much about it. And not just, like, obviously we want people to have fun and have this great experience, but to have this like deeper connection yeah deeper connection is just it's more than I could ever have hoped for I'm just I'm like I feel joyous I like I don't think I've ever felt so proud of anything that I've done so yeah it, uh, it's magical do you think this this role will change your life because I feel like I heard you say you've changed as an actor after yeah. this process I feel like you said that in an interview recently yeah, I I fully stand by that. I think, I mean, the last the last four years have have changed us all. I think because of world events for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, but I think as I've as I've understood myself more, and like been on my own personal journey of that, um, which I'm still very much on. <laughs> um, but I think. I think that kind of changed my relationship with Shadowheart and and how I felt about her and therefore totally influenced her performance, my performance of her. Does that work grammatically? I'm not sure. So, yeah, I, I absolutely think that Shadowheart was kind of instrumental in that as well because it allowed, for as actors, like the, the really cool thing about it is that we get to explore parts of ourselves like me as Jen like I'm I'm quite like bouncy and and hopefully not all the time definitely not when I'm tired or hungry but like I I'm I hope to be quite lovely and friendly and obviously Shadowheart 
is not light and fluffy and it allowed me to explore that side of myself that strength and that determination that I wouldn't share and like we all have all these different aspects within us I don't think I think it's really reductive to go like I'm a shy person I'm a loud person we all have and you know and that's what I love about acting is that it isn't like we aren't characteristics um so yeah exploring those depths of my character through shadow heart has a thousand percent um helped me grow so cheers shadow heart you've contributed to my therapy <laughs> well why do you think you were chosen for the role i have no idea <laughs> when i auditioned honestly like when i got this part i was like I, do you, do you mean me <laughs> who usually plays like kids in your game yeah um I auditioned so I think I, I don't know whether it was the same for everyone but I I think it was with Dev and and Neil anyway who have definitely spoken to you about it yeah. but we were given like several different races that it wasn't like a particular role I wasn't auditioning for Shadow Heart I was just auditioning for the game and yeah. so I you know did my various like I think I auditioned for like a drow and maybe um a dwarf and I can't remember what else and so you know you're just like I just played about with it and and I think that half elf one I think I just kind of played with that stillness and and that power and I I think because it wasn't for one specific thing it meant Mm. that I could really play with all the different sides of myself Mm. and so obviously somebody saw something but I think what's really beautiful about Shadowheart as a character is that yeah as I said she isn't that kind of one she isn't one specific thing she isn't just sassy she isn't just strong there's a deep vulnerability in her and maybe because I am not outwardly that kind of character that kind of uh, um Mm. I'm going to be mean to you it allowed for other kind of what what word am I looking for Dan like kind of like currents of other things to to seep underneath so I but I don't honestly I still to this day I'm a bit like sure I'm sure you wanted me to do even it. four no not four years later come on no maybe not maybe, <laughs> maybe know, imposter, you, syn- imposter yeah. syndrome is real you know what I mean but um yeah uh yeah I, I'm just st- I'm still just like without being too like hashtag blast um <laughs> but you know I don't want to be gross but I am still so grateful <laughs> um to to be here and um yeah it's but like I think one of the things that I'm most kind of thrilled by is the audience and and the fans of this game like I don't know what I was expecting but the level of like respect and intelligence and oh, like I've had yeah. some of the most like like interesting chats with people and like so kind and great like, fan base I, yeah such a great fan base <laughs> yeah. um like i just want to be best friends with everyone i talk I to i'm not joking I know. um uh and to be fair of everyone that i know that plays dungeons and dragons like you have to have that level of like creative intelligence mm, i think to definitely. want to do that in the first place so i think that's perhaps where it comes from and that kind of individuality because you're not doing your run of the mill i don't know you're not sitting down and watching love island not that there's anything wrong with sitting down <laughs> and love watching love island but you're yeah. participating in something that's so unique and like there's no co- copy paste of what a dungeons and dragons game will look like like every single campaign will be vastly different to each other so yeah so I think just the type of person that wants to play Baldur's Gate 3 has that um and I love it um and I I love yeah I, I haven't touched wood come across 
I'm sure it will. But no, I, I haven't, haven't seen any toxicity. Anything. Like it's really wholesome. It's unbelievable. It's so really. wholesome, which is yeah. exactly what I'm here for. With a few like swear words thrown in, and <laughs> uh, it's a wholesome. I mean, Dan, there's a there's a lot of horniness going on too. But as far as like the interactions yeah. go, yeah, there is a lot of horniness. You're right. Horny, horny, and wholesome. We can be both. <laughs> How did you find that side of it? I'm curious, those romance scenes and all that. Like, how did you, you know, because they do a really uh, good job, I feel, they with They do it. a really good job. Yeah. yeah, I think, I mean, obviously every character's romance storyline is is different. I love, I love Shadowheart. I mean, there's, there's like, there isn't one romance with Shadowheart. It's completely dependent on the player and how you interact with it, obviously. Um, but even in all of those iterations, I'm really proud of that. Um, yeah, I was actually having brunch with Tom, one of the voice directors today, Tom Mitchells, who was intru- instrumental in getting um, uh, an intimacy director in. Um, yeah. And I loved that. Uh, like he, he really, he was just like, this needs to happen. And it did. And it, I felt so safe. I had my girlfriend there the whole time. So, you know, it, like Adiana, Baranova, the performance director, who's also an actor as well. And so she just understands it. And like all the directors made me feel so safe. It it could have been awful and uncomfortable, but it just never, ever was. And I think that's so vital because I think you can tell if an actor, I don't know about you, but if you're watching something on the telly and you go, there's mm. something off with this sex scene or this romance, you really feel it and you're like oh can we fast forward it whereas if you can see that an actor is comfortable and um having fun and really feeling genuine and authentic then that makes us engage so it just it's a win-win for everybody for actors to feel safe um you're just going to get better art so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm such a big like fan of intimacy coordinators and um and just generally making actors and everyone, and it's not just the actors. That's the thing. It's it's, it's the everyone. directors being yeah. comfortable. It's the it's the mocap engineer. It's the everyone was consulted once once we had intimacy coordinators in, like or it was Asha, the one in, intimacy coordinator. But she she just made sure that everybody in that set, I suppose, was comfortable with the content. And I think that's. Yeah, it should just be a a baseline now um, as we move forward. So, yeah. So you met... it was handed away the well. You met your girlfriend through the game? Yeah, Yeah, I did. That's that's pretty special, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, so she was was brought on, I think, six months after I started. And um, she... The first time we met, she goes... Oh, I think it was like the first or second session... She pipes in going, hi, hi, Jen, I'm, I'm Aliana, I'm your performance director. Um, do you, do you have ADHD? And they're like, who is this guy? Like, and I was like, uh, don't, don't know why you're asking. Uh, yeah. And like, cause I'm there like wiggling around. Cause she needs <laughs> like, like she was like, there's something like different about this. And I think the way that I focus and, uh, anyway, fast forward. Turns out yeah. I absolutely do have ADHD, and you know, and you didn't know at the time. That. I didn't know at the time. Wow. And um, yeah, so she just really got my movement and and helped me rein stuff in because I just want to wiggle all the time, and <laughs> you know, that's not always appropriate. And um, with mocap, the poor, the everyone involved trying to like yeah. rein me in. Um, and she managed to do it in a way that felt really like it wasn't like I was being like bound or anything and I couldn't move. Like it just yeah. meant that like I could understand my own movement better. And anyway, so, yeah, I just thought she was this amazing performance director, which she is, and kind of said, oh, like I'd really like to have her on my sessions. She she knows what to do with the character and um and then lo and behold now we're in love so um, and living <laughs> together and having a great time and she's you know running my tw- running a twitter account no she she's her own person on twitter but she is she is she's a stand. Of a shadow she's heart a, and, yeah. yeah 
she yeah, is. she's a sh- shadow heart ambassador on Twitter. <laughs> wow! So, so she's, you, she's yeah, you fell in love, yeah. and the rest I is history. That's that's amazing. So, yeah, how did how did you react when you got that diagnosis of ADHD? Did it affect you in a good way? Like, how did in you, a very yeah. good way? Yeah, yeah, it was. It, yeah, it was very life changing, and and like. It's interesting because I've noticed that a lot of um, the fans of the game, or certainly the people I've met, maybe it's just the fans of Shadowheart, oh, no. um, yeah. are neuro- neurodiverse. And I think a lot of people who play video games are neurodiverse. Like this is, this is like a BG3 neuro neuro spicy family. Um, yeah, it's it's been one of the most like life cha- like that i mean this is part of the four years of life changingness um of uh shadow heart and and adhd yeah so yeah i was diagnosed when was it it was in the middle of the pandemic at some point where which i think a lot of us who suddenly you know had to listen to ourselves and be still and not fill our lives with busyness when that kind of falls away and you go Oh, hang on something's really something's not right mm. and obviously the like ongoing like online conversation and I think um you know assigned female and birth people um realizing that their neurodiversity is different to the kind of assigned male at birth like which is where a lot of the research goes into and what a lot of the diagnostic criteria is based on um I think we all like a lot of us kind of went oh oh this is me oh this is me um and yeah to to do that while I can't remember I've literally I've just done the most ADHD thing thing ever and completely got distracted by my own thoughts whilst talking about ADHD (laughs) well done me um but yeah it's so so that was like realizing that I wasn't stupid and that I wasn't there wasn't something inherently wrong with me that I wasn't a failure because my memories my short-term memory is crap or that that I'm not a failure because I can never remember to close cupboard doors or you know all those little things that add up to a big pile of shame um so you, did you feel self-esteem. like a failure a lot of the time like, oh what? completely I mean really? from a kid like I I, it's that feeling of because a lot of like one of the big um uh symptoms of ADHD is executive dysfunction which is when when you just can't do the usual things that you want to do and so things like um I like I would want to do my homework I'd, I'd really want to but my brain was telling me to not do it because obviously it just didn't have enough dopamine to do it. So I'm there, this like people pleasing kid, just going, I can't do my homework and I don't know why. And then having to turn up to school going, I haven't done it. And there's no excuse for me having not done it. And I want mm. to please you and I can't. And now I'm being told off and I'm crying. So, mm. and, 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 being called a crybaby because emotional dysregulation is or emotional regulation is a is it, yeah emotional dysregulation is like a, a massive symptom um and uh you know being told from the age of four that I'm this crybaby and I've got all these feelings and I don't know what to do with them and not knowing why I'm crying all the time um mm. when actually you know again it's it's part and parcel of being a, a person with ADHD so yeah I had some and, and it's something I'm still definitely unpicking and 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 unlearning that kind of I am not a a bad person because I feel deeply or I'm not a bad person because I forget birthdays which you know or I find it really difficult to reply to some people sometimes because my brain is telling me I can't do it so it's definitely a journey that I will still be on for many years I'm sure but I think I found a community of people and and like my girlfriend has ADHD as well which is why I probably should have filled that in in the story which is why she also really spotted it in me um so early on yeah I I completely missed that bit of the story Dan (laughs) but you know no no that's it makes me a hard person to interview I'm sure um 
um yeah I forget stuff all the time and I forget parts of stories all the time and I just think I've said it and I haven't no at least we got the full story now no at least is, yeah, at least we I'm we, sure there's loads of it that Aliana's like you forgot to say that <laughs> you plonk uh, her um right. yeah and and how does how have you dealt with the sort of all the messages coming through like that side of I, it do you um can't reply to them all you know what I mean like it's, I've, I've, I've been tr- I've been trying have you I think I'm glad yeah. that I'm glad that I'm not on Twitter I think my mental health would plummet if I was which is why I'm very glad that Aliona's on it and yeah. she's much better at replying um Instagram I've been trying really hard to to reply to everyone um and yeah I, I'm like I'm doing my best I can't yeah. promise that like I'll keep no I, I am gonna try yeah I'm attempting because I don't want to for anyone to feel and and that's where I like I'm sure as time goes on I'll find um my way through it a bit better as far as like you know maybe a lotting time to do it because it's really hard to and one thing I'm navigating navigating now is like okay I've got to be careful to not let social media run my day um so maybe yeah. in the future it'll be like okay I have my like allotted time and I'll go on Instagram and reply to everyone but um yeah at the moment I am a little bit glued to this why have I got my I don't know why I've got my torch on. <laughs> yeah, so you are up. you are kind of glued at the moment, just sort of looking things yeah. up, looking at different scenes. I'm guessing. I am loving watching scenes, that not just not of me. Like I'm like just in general, I'm a big, yeah. just in general, like just watching all my friends do incredible work. Um, yeah, I mean, I could literally listen to Amelia Tyler's voice all day every day oh i think it's one of the best i think we all could i think it's just like she's universally unbelievable for a very good reason like yeah she's so good and so funny as well yeah um but i think that's what i love about the game is that you've got this like depth and um intensity and then you've just got so much humor and horniness and lightness as well at the same time and you know i i love that makes me very happy so you're not gonna play it i'm oh, guessing you're not a game i am right? going to i am i am borrowing my <laughs> girlfriend's 19 year old brother's ps5 and i am playing this game um <laughs> i i am gonna do it whether i'll be any good at it remains to be seen <laughs> You are all you going to have to help me, but yeah. I am going to do it. Yeah, I'm not. I are you gonna are you gonna stream it or what? Not play it. Maybe if we yeah. can work out how to do that, I'll help yeah. you. Out. If people, I'll help you. If people want to, then yeah, absolutely. Oh. You'll see me be un- incompetent at it, but it would be lovely because also so much, like because we didn't record fully in, in like a wonderful linear order. That would have been easy. Um, <laughs> like obviously we're like recording stuff from act one right up until the end and yeah. you know you're you're not quite sure when you do it where this is going to slot in and what your surroundings look like and who you're talking to and so you know like you know what they sound like maybe but you might not know what they look like until much later on and so yeah I am so excited to play it um come PS5 launch so yeah Oh, so we could be streaming. You never know. Could be streaming. Yeah, Keep I think. Keep an eye think on your might. Instagram, yeah. hey? Yeah, exactly. Dan, how do I do Twitch? <laughs> You'll be right. You Neil Neil's helped you a lot, I know, and he'll he'll probably Yeah. He's a he definitely will. he's an expert at everything, that guy. I don't I don't know anything he's bad at. You know, can you Anything find his weakness, his at. tonight? I will find his weakness and exploit it. <laughs> That can be my next task. <laughs> well, yeah, to get an job. I'm just gonna fight. I'm just gonna exploit me. No, uh, what is what is Neil bad at? I don't know. Yeah. That's a very good question. I think he's bad at I'm resting. Sure yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Being still. Being still. That's what Neil's bad at. Um, uh... Yeah. No. He's he's been he's been amazing. He's kind of 
held held my hand all the way through this. I'm very grateful for Neil Newborn um, and all of, all of the origins actually. Like uh, Deborah Wild, uh, who plays Lazelle, the irony that she is one of my most wonderful friends when Lazelle and Shadow Heart hate each other. <laughs> I know. But we like just we just like I adore that woman so much and yeah and yet do we get on in the game not at all but um yeah no the the the, the actors on this game have are just I love how everyone's so invested in it and it's so invested in this game and I wonder if it's because we've spent so long doing it <laughs> and and it's seen us through a, it's seen us through a pandemic and yeah um you know yeah. like it's such a long period of time but every like you know I like <laughs> Samantha Bayer and I like text each other Tarlac and Shadowheart stands and you know all the fan <laughs> art of of those two because believe me I've up upgraded that uh that relationship with Carlac as much as I can. Um <laughs> Shadow Heart fancies Carlac. I have made it no Oh it really? Okay. It's official. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, it's official in my mind. <laughs> it's canon now. Um, you know that. It's canon now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, Shadow Heart definitely has a crush on Carlac. Yeah. I, I think don't know so. how much it's reciprocated. But who cares? I think that's the good thing about Shadowheart. Like, even if it's not, she's like, yeah, whatever. I'm still amazing. So, <laughs> yeah. Did Shadowheart change, didn't she? Because she, yeah. what was it originally compared to what we got in the final product? So originally she was she was far more acerbic and prickly. And she still can be. And it's funny because I, I spoke to John, the writer, a little bit about that. I mean, there is still that option yeah but I think if you play your cards right um and you know you don't do the things that Shallow Heart doesn't want you to do I've put in too many negatives there she you do do the things <laughs> she does want you to do now like, yeah I've made it easy for myself then um then absolutely she she can be a bit kinder um yeah and and uh less guarded I mean she's guarded for sure Mm. um still but yeah I think at the beginning she was just pure mean pure pure mean um right. which is really fun to play but I think actually we needed we needed a bit more variation there um so yeah but I think I think the fans were kind of instrumental in that and you know I think Aliana said today um because she always makes fun of me for using the word like love letter like i'll watch something and be like that's a real love letter for that <laughs> um but it but i love that game, too i always say no, that i love saying that uh, um uh, but this this game is a, such a love letter to the fans um yeah. and uh i think the way that they've been so the fans have been so instrumental in the creation of this game um you know, I think is really special. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how many other games are like that where it's been so collaborative. Um, but as far as, which is so cool and it just says so much about Larian's ethic, uh, work ethic and things. So, yeah. Um, so she, I think the fans kind of went, actually, I would like to see a different side of Shadow Hearts. And, you know, very quickly we did. Um, as a result so thank you guys yeah and now now we've got this very very human for want of a better word character um mm. which which i adore playing so yeah we will get into sense. some more uh questions about shadow Heart, but i want to do a quick sidetrack to because i know you're an avid book lover what are you reading at the moment if anything give us some recommendations just... I've literally just started Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin, yeah, um, which is about, I, I, like, I haven't got to the plot bit, but it's about video game production. So I, I don't know how it's going to be. I haven't read it, but it looks really good. It's got great reviews. So that's what I'm reading at the moment. Um, what other books have I read recently? I've been re reading lots of sad girl literature, um, and I need to step away from that a bit because there's a great article in the guardian about it but i'm like yeah i'm kind of done 
with that genre for now because too much. I don't want to just, just too much yeah. uh, like I love it and there's so many beautiful writers that write about it but I'm like I, you know I've, I've, I've done enough feeling sad so <laughs> for now I'd like to pause on that are there um, many comedy books yeah you always there, you are, wanna, there, are. there are okay there are. I think I like the kind of comedy book where people go, is that comedy? <laughs> you know, like, I think that always tickles my sickle. Like, there's a really Marmite book called My Year of Rest and Relaxation, which, honestly, you go, if people have read it, they either go, that's funny and brilliant and I loved it, or they go, I absolutely fucking hated that <laughs> book and I wanted to throw it into the River Thames. So, and you were on um, the... You were on the- I, I found it no, really loved, funny. Yeah, you loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Mm. Um, yeah, I think because she like is such a toxic, unlikable protagonist, yeah. and I just I found the whole concept of it's basically she tries to self medicate for a whole year. Um, she tries to she takes sleeping pills to try and sleep through this year, and I just I just thought it was genius, and it's how a lot of us has felt. <laughs> um where you just you're just like I just, I'm out I'm out of yeah. life I just want to I just want to I just want to sleep so um very relatable but yeah Definitely. I quite I, I do quite like a, an, a toxic protagonist sometimes maybe that's why I love Lazelle so much oh shade <laughs> a bit of, a bit of shade <laughs> Lele. so what's your all-time favorite series book series I'm curious book series <sighs> Or give me a couple. I love the book series for me. It's all about his dark materials. I could reread that every year. Yeah. Um, absolutely love that. Absolutely love that. Um, but like favorite books, I loved um Cersei, Madeline Miller. Very very big on the on the TikTok. What's that but one? I uh, so it's a reimagining of um the Odyssey, but through the eyes of Cersei, who I think is a witch. I like I love anything Greek mythology. Oh, um, I only okay. read I only read the Odyssey, um, like a few years ago, and I was like, well, I like because I didn't go to a private school, so I didn't study classics. Um, <laughs> although I would have absolutely loved to, apparently, but yeah, I I really adored it. Although it's like, yeah, I'd like to. I I think what I loved about Cersei is that it was through the lens of a woman and not, you know. Yeah. And the thousands of year old men telling stories. I think we're kind of done with that. But yeah, yeah. so um, yeah, Cersei, highly recommend that. Um, I've got, I'm looking at all my books. I moved in with 14 meters of books when I moved in with my girlfriend. 14 and, meters. Um, meters. Yeah, we because we had to sort out shelving and things. And oh my I, goodness me. Yeah, I really like, I really like reading. Your house is a library. It is pretty library-ish. Um, I need another bookcase as well because I just I like I, yeah. It's where when all does my when does the goes. obsession end? When when does the collection stop? It never stops. We're going to keep a, the train going. I'm a ah. hoarder of books. I just I I know like yeah, just love them so much. So if anyone wants to talk books with me, yeah, I'm the gal. I, just, I love I it. Talk about Do you have day. any? Do you have any aspirations to write a book or anything? No. Not at all. No, just a reader. Not at all. And just a reader. I think if I suddenly woke up with the inspiration and went, yeah, I really want to write this story, then I absolutely would. But I've I've just never had that. I like to write poetry. Um yeah. not to share with anyone else, just as like my own personal creative thing. And I think we should have more really? of that. I think there's always this like kind of pressure of like oh you do a creative thing and that's got to show to someone to make money somewhere yeah. or yeah, to show yeah. someone and yeah. maybe actually like draw some bad drawings just for yourself write some bad poetry just for yourself and you know enjoy the fact that it's a bit shit that's where I'm at in my life anyway yeah. like just be a bit rubbish at stuff and I think it's it's hard I like I'm a perfectionist on so many levels um which is I think a really toxic trait of mine frankly um and uh doesn't make you very happy and so I think it's really good to practice being rubbish um, you say that but your poetry could be magnificent 
and we it would know. Be. It, you know that is also true yeah you've got to be brave enough to be seen sometimes yeah it's hard tough like one. I think it's a tough <laughs> one because when you read so much and you can consume so much like good, good literature and good art like I have such a high standard for it like I'm a bit of a, a book snob and and so like if I write something, I'd want it to be as good as yeah. the best. So oh, well, that's it's, tough. it's a real tricky yeah. one, real tricky yeah. one. But then I, I feel like I'm a bit like that with my acting as well. Like I hold such high standards for myself um, and and really push myself to do like as beautiful a job as possible. And I'd probably have a lot more fun if I took that pressure off myself and probably do a better job. I think where I've really relaxed into things and gone, it's okay, I can I can fail a bit. That's probably where I've done my best work. So, you know, I think I think a lot of us are on that journey, aren't we? But uh, yeah. like the creativity. Like what what is it like where you oh, there's a there's a there's a word for it Dan or like there's a name for it where you've got the you've got the peak of Mount Stupid and then you've got the the bit of despair yeah. where I know, what you're talking, I know what you're talking oh, about that's gonna bug me for days yeah, I know what um, you're talking about valley of despair a bit yeah. and you know I feel like I, I hopefully I'm in the valley of despair rather than the peak <laughs> of Mount Stupid um yeah uh, yeah that's brilliant Oh goodness me! We better get into some fan questions. I mean, oh yeah, I, I don't do. think I've I don't think I've ever had this many come through. Like I'm, I'm genuinely really? ever. 150 episodes. There is so many. We're just simply not going to be able to get to them. But we'll do our best to get through as many we'll as do possible. Our best. We'll do our best. Um, Homer Homer lives says. I noticed changes in how Shadowheart interacts with the main character from early access to the release version. Did you record all the dialogue at once or did Larian bring you back for rewrites to the dialogue? Oh, so many rewrites and so many. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been back in. And, and as I said before, like we've, I mean, right up into the end, we were doing stuff. We would sometimes go, oh, this is a scene from act one. And you go, oh, great. Okay. Where? Where is Shadowheart at on this journey? Like, what what's been going on yet? That like, must be tough, just, though. It's really like, yeah. thank God for our directors who are there to help with that. But yeah, we we jump about all over the place. So yeah, there's been so many rewrites and so many um, versions of things. And yeah, like the way we interact, like the way I interact with the player is going to be really different if you're a fellow Sharon and you're romancing me than if you're a, a gif and or a salunite you know like we yeah. the way i interact with, with the way the companions re interact with the player like varies hugely so it might also be that you're on a different playthrough and you've made slightly different choices and therefore the story is going to go very differently for you because you've you've made one yeah. choice instead of another and you've gone on like diverging paths that's that's the beauty of this game so yeah i'm, I'm not surprised hey, do you know what race you're going to choose for your playthrough do you know um what you're going to do i'm thinking i'm doing lots of research about it i think <laughs> i'd like to be a druid i think i'd like to be a druid i think I'd, yeah. I'd really like to to talk to all the animals and i think yeah because um yeah yeah i think i'd, I'd really like i'd really like that so i think druid um from my first playthrough but cool. i'm not sure i'll probably get to the character creation and be like <gasps> a drow <laughs> you know dark urge i'm not doing dark urge will you be one of those am i no oh okay you, will you be one not of those yet, people that spends thing. like six hours with the creator eight almost guaranteed <laughs> look i'm a sims yeah. child like i oh, grew up yeah. on the first sims yeah. and yeah. you know where you spent like and we had an awful computer and it would literally like I would go I'd set it loading go off and have my tea and then come back and it would still be loading that's that's how rudimentary it was um I'm showing my age here. how um, good's your sims but, talk how good's your sims talk Guben Gavin so, Guben Adden Guben Gavin Guben Adden um one of my favorite things is to listen to Katy Perry singing in Simlish it makes me so like 
Coming down a plum loop. No, 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 no. Like, like, listen to it. It's uh, like yeah. if you just want to, if you just want to feel a bit happier in life, then, <laughs> then do that. <laughs> oh goodness me! When it, when's the last time you played Sims? I'm guessing it's been a while. Oh, like since since I since I was a kid. So yeah, I think. Oh maybe. wow! I, yeah, I will just you will just lose me forever if I yeah. play The Sims again. I just can't do it. So yeah, character creation, like it will be a full day thing. Because also I can't make decisions. So yeah, I will. Re- I'll be like, oh, I'll try that. Oh no, I don't like it. Go back. Well, like, it will be awful. I've got a decision that I need you to make. Act one hairstyle or act three hairstyle? I'm trying to be careful of spoilers here, don't I? Hyper shock, 1994. Act, Which act one? Three. Act, act three. three. Okay. Love it. I have to agree as well. Spoiler warning. Sarah. Spoiler warning. Sarah. Spoiler warning. Sarah. Okay, next question. Did you prefer Shadowheart or Sweetheart Genevelle? That's a massive spoiler. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Spoiler warning. That was oh, that hit me in the gut when you said that. You can't, <laughs> can't see that here. <laughs> gonna, like spoiler. Hey, this is the top question, by the way. So everyone's obviously really? yeah, everyone's already in on it. I think. <laughs> well, look, look, look. I there are similarities in the name for a reason Mm. um i uh i love this part of the story when i first read it it made me cry i really yeah so you can't have one without the other yeah so how can i choose like it's like choosing a part like it's too too rich and too much apart um too intertwined so i can't choose but the I know what path when I play it I know what path I will go down and it's it's the one you probably think yeah the one that's more like I yeah, don't want to yeah. get more of it no, but no. yeah um, I get what you're throwing yeah 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 and so yeah. you were I, you you read the script and you you just you were kind of just sitting there sort of wow this writing's incredible. Yeah, I had no idea. I, yeah. yeah, I think John Corcoran, I think, deserves all the awards. I, I mean, all the writers on this game are fantastic. And obviously, I mainly deal with John. Um, and I I think he's such a talent. And he wrote Shadowheart? He yeah. 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 Yeah, that's his baby. And I'm so honoured that I get to read his words, you know, that I get to... That, that I I'm the one that get to that get I mean he writes other characters as well he writes House in and he's yeah, done yeah. amazing work all over this game but, but that's um, that's kind yeah. of his child isn't it like yeah and yeah. um yeah it, like I'm so honored to be the one that 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 plays Shadowheart for his writing as much as anything else and and obviously like the animation and the design and all the people at Larian and all the people at Pit Stop who record the dialogue and and the mocap and e- edit it and it, like everyone involved is like holds such a huge place in my heart and deserves all the praise that it's getting. But um, but yeah, yeah John. And so John he knows how to how to destroy people's hearts, <laughs> including mine. <laughs> So yeah, uh, love him. So love he's him. he's off like whenever you're shooting a scene, you can contact him on Slack, right? If you need if you have any questions. I mean I, I didn't, but it, like it was okay. mainly it was mainly Aliona actually, and they still they still message a lot. Um I mean yeah. all day sometimes. They're, they're really good <laughs> friends. I mean like and I'm like they're like, Hi, I love you. Um, <laughs> you're uh, the third wheel, so. yeah. I'm the third wheel in this and I'm okay with that. No, um, yeah, I'm really hoping I get to meet him soon because I haven't actually met him yet, which is nuts. Um, because Larian are all over the world. That's crazy, I mean, yeah. Literally everywhere. And you're like, am I talking to you in Canada or Malaysia <laughs> or Ghent yeah. or 
um yeah they're all over the shop so dublin um guildford they're like everywhere so yeah so there's so many people that i haven't met and i just want to like cuddle whether they want to cuddle me or not i don't know <laughs> consensual cuddle i love a good cuddle yeah love a good cuddle love a good hug uh, this is where I think me and Shadowheart differ. I don't, I'm not yeah, sure she's an no. immediate hugger. No, she's a tough nut to crack. As I am. Yeah. 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 Uh, that one was from Tricol. This one is from Morica. Yes. Sorry if I'm getting your names wrong, guys. Jeremy Lee, the voice actor for Cyberpunk 2077's protagonist V, shared that in order to get into the character, she would start off by saying what's on the menu a couple of times to find the voice. Was there a quip that you did to get into the voice of Shadowheart? No, not to get into the voice. That just kind of, that was easy. It For me, it was the physicality because she's she's like a trained warrior, right? And I am not. I am a... I don't know. You, you're um, pretty good. I saw you on top of a hot air balloon. I mean, I couldn't do that. <laughs> um. So when we we have this thing called bass pose, which all of our uh, when we record mocap, every we always go back to the same bass pose. So for me to it's really just this, find the character, not that. no, that's the T nah, pose. That's, that's the, the T pose. pose. Yeah. And we've been doing A pose for the last couple of years as well. So um, yeah. no, we do the ROM, and which is where you you do all these different movements to to get all the soft hands. So I'm such a <laughs> Luddite. <laughs> so like yeah, so to, to get all the thingies to match with the thingies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Technical that's technical yeah, terms, guys. You wouldn't understand terms. that. Yeah. Wouldn't understand, guys. <laughs> um uh so yeah, you do it like you're on. And then once that's all cal so all the system's calibrated and it's got all your skeleton all in the system and stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh then you do your A pose and then you do your base pose, which but and everyone's character base pose is slightly different. Um, and me getting into Shadow Heart, it was this kind of raising of the chest and shoulders back and right foot forward. And really? yeah, so I'd find yeah, her like confidence. find her physically, yeah, confidence for sure. Mm. And like groundedness. Mm. Um so that that was the way that like I would immediately be like Shadowheart and the other day I was recording a cameo for someone who wanted a message from Shadowheart directly and um I I was going to do it from the sofa and I was like I can't and I had to get up and just to do my base pose and then yeah. and then I could get into it but yeah that's that's how I feel her physically um not vocally 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 was fine that's interesting yeah yeah and by the way, guys, different. get a get a cameo from from Jen, please. Let's flood her yeah. cameo so she's got nothing else to I've do. I've got I've got quite a few already. G give oh, me a no, couple sorry. of days, guys. Please, sorry, I've just no, made no, 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 do, do. I love, I know, I love, I love, I absolutely love doing them. Uh, and the problem is, is that like I think you're supposed to do a minute, and I'm there like talking three minutes later. Yeah. Like I, I'm you're there like a podcast. Want it. like, <laughs> yeah, your own personal podcast from me um yeah. yeah like i've just yeah if you want me to reply that's the thing like i love a voice note i'm one of those millennials uh, that yeah, love yeah. the voice note me too like, it's personal podcasts for your friends yeah. they're great it just feels so much more personal and also i, I got fat fingers I always... I always misspell things so you know i and also like i can't walk and text at the same time i just do not have that multitasking capability. I wish I could. I know people do. The other day I tried to and I stacked it in the middle of Battersea and I've now got a oh, giant really? gash on my knee. Yeah, because oh, I shit. tried to text when I should have voice noted. Oh, no. Well, I hope the recovery is going all right. It's a tough one, frankly. Uh, you can all send me flowers and grapes. Grapes. From my, ah. I don't know what what else do you get when you you slightly grazed your knee. <laughs> <laughs> Jacqueline Sparrow, is there a particular scene or moment that stands out as your favourite? And did you uh, ever get emotional? Yes. Um, we just mentioned that before. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, spoilers. 
but yep. there, there's a particular moment that we probably all know that involves a couple of other people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And a certain big person. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I tried not to, I think there was some, uh, there was a lot of tears around that. Um, oh, yeah. lot, I mean, there's a lot, like a lot, but I just remember coming home and just being a little bit inconsolable. Um, yeah, that was really hurt. Yeah, wow. I mean, I spent so long with this, with this, with Shadow Heart, and I'm so like invested in her story. And so, when something like this came along, it of course it was going to affect like like I knew I knew if John did something like that, I would probably fall apart. And I did like, you know, healthily fell apart. But um I'm okay guys, don't worry. But um yeah, I it's really hard like acting and I think it's why like I don't know how people do like full on method acting like Lady Gaga in um Gucci and things like it's going to because your brain can't or certainly mine can't differentiate I think that is a, a psychological thing where you kind of pretend something it's why like people smile you you tell someone to smile and sometimes I mean it's a little bit toxic positivity but you can smile and kind of trick your brain into thinking that you're happy right and why like laughter is so important and and things and so sometimes when you're acting you're like you know whether it's like anger or grief or like you can't your brain kind of goes oh yes I'm feeling those things like of course yeah. and when you're really invested in in that it's so hard to, and not to for that not to like seep into you and I think like so many of us and I know ne like so many of the origin characters specifically but actually like all 278 I feel like the general feeling is like this like in investment and importance in our characters and I think that's what makes this game so special as well um is that everyone cares so deeply and the directors cared so deeply and what well, everyone does everyone's but passionate aren't they it seeps through so passionate. into the world. It really, you know? and of course it does. Of course it does. And um, and it goes both ways, you know? Like, I think the more passionate the fans are, the more passionate mm. the creators are. And, and, you know, we just kind of hype each other up in this gorgeous snowball of positivity but um, and passion. But, yeah, I, I like, of course I was going to be affected by that. And, um. Yeah, it was exhausting. And I think there was one point where I, I felt like it, it was a real, like, I needed a good few days off. Like, and thank goodness I did. Yeah. But like, I like I'm, it, it was hard. It was really hard. And I'm glad it was hard. You know, like, mm -hmm. I'm glad that I, that I, that the writing and the story was good enough, like, as good as, and brilliant as it was, that I could feel like well, that. It shouldn't be easy, like should a it? Privilege. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We don't want to be in our comfort zones and I don't want to just stroll along and um and coast. I want to I want to feel this passionate about something. So yeah, it's nothing but a privilege. I like I just want to make that No, like, no, it's it's abundant. Yeah, I hope clear. hopefully I've made yeah. that clear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um yeah, it but yeah that that scene that i think if you've played the game and and yeah. followed shallow heart story you know what i mean um yeah there was a huge huge amount of emotion that day well those days because it took a while but um yeah did you get yeah i got two on that did you were you nervous heading into that scene and secondly did you get any direction from anyone on that scene any oh, specific like, with, direction with we we collaborate all the time so yeah. um like so at all points there's a there's a performance director and a, a voice director and it's a constant conversation so like nothing like i'm not out here directing myself no way no like, i i just mean particular like did you get any specific sort of guidance or anything like that for that scene i mean it's yeah i mean i'm trying to remember now i'm just like 
It's been a while. I think yeah. it was. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. I think I was made to feel. I think it wasn't so much that. I mean, obviously, all the time, as I say, like every line is directed, and but I think for the, at that point, I mean, there's there's a point where for all, especially the origins, where we got to a point in our story where we know the characters so deeply, and the directors do as well. And so there is an element of just kind of going for it. And I think with the big emotional stuff, it didn't really need too much because it was all kind of there in the text and in the story. So there didn't have to be a huge amount of pushing from anyone to to get us to those places like with this with Neil doing Astarian and his like giant storyline which is beautiful and um you know like it like I think it's just a case of making the actors feel safe enough that they can go to those places and I think that was the beauty of the working progress is that a uh, process even that that we did feel that safety and that support from the team that we could just like go right I'm going to go to a really vulnerable place here and I know that you're going to be holding me at the end of it were you shitting yourself absolutely but then I think (laughs) I was shitting myself all the way through um I think I'm just I'm just a constantly shitting yourself on set just constantly shitting myself all the time a chart. I'm called chart for a reason, guys. Constant charting. It's funny you say that. That, was actually, a question. Like to... that was actually a question. Do you know about chart? Yeah, that's funny. I know about chart. I'm not blind. <laughs> but also, I think I think Tilly, uh, one of my amazing voice directors. I feel like she created. Like she didn't create chart. I mean, chart created itself. You know, but um, <laughs> she's been she's been calling me chart for years. Um, uh, Before you yeah, booked the role, I call her Shart. She always called Before you Shart. Before I booked the role, yeah, it's just my nickname, childhood nickname, yeah. Shart. What was the origin you know, of that? You just energy. sharted yourself one day, yeah. Sharted myself one day, and the rest <laughs> is history done. So I can make it I'm clear. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, uh, my name is Jen, <laughs> and that's my only nickname. I have many nicknames, unfortunately, uh, but yeah, 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 we're only joke. Or are we? Or oh, are we? God, that's funny. We've yeah, so so you were you were kind of nervous throughout. Yeah, a certain scene. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know if nervous is, I don't know if nervous is the right word. You're probably excited as well. That, yeah, I think it's more. I think it was more the, the weight of responsibility without sounding too like about it. No, no. But yeah. like, I think, I think especially, I think the turning point for me was um, going to my first Comic Con and meeting the people playing the game and I think meeting the people spending those hours with with us that really shifted I mean I've always felt it I've always felt that kind of we've got to do this justice um I've always felt that like level of care for it but I think that really meeting the people and seeing how wonderful they are and kind and generous like you wouldn't believe like how wonderful the people I've met are like you're a bit like do you actually exist like are you just beautiful deity angel things coming into like what um but I think meeting meeting them and kind of going right I'm doing this I'm doing this for you um not that sounds a bit holier than thou but you know what no, I mean, no. like that kind yeah. of, uh, yeah, I think I think meeting those people, like meeting meeting people and going, right, okay, you are spending so much time with these characters. I mean, there's what, 100 and, what, what was it, Valerian says, like 172 yeah. yeah. hours of cinematic context. So that's what, like 80 films worth of content. Shit, I didn't think about it like that. That's crazy. Like, and how invested do we feel after watching one film? You know, you can watch one film and be like, I love these characters. I love this film. Like, and it's only two hours long. So let alone all of that. And you're playing as an extension of yourself Mm. as a character. It's not just you're watching it, you're playing it, you're living it. And so I think that really 
shifted something in me and made me not nervous, but gave me a different angle of care towards it. And so I think I've just always felt like, yeah, it's not, it's not nerves, but it's certainly an awareness, which I think is the best motivator ever. Like I never once went, oh, I don't want to go to work today. Because how could you feel like that when you've got people, people like that coming up to you and going like, I've I've really enjoyed this story. Like, like, uh, you know, Mm. yeah, it's just, again, I don't want to sound too hashtag blessed. Oh, no. But there is Four years of of your life, I think you... You're you're allowed I'm to allowed hashtag a little bit, guys. Yeah, I'm I allowed, think you're a. I'm allowed you, a little yeah, bit. Free reign, yeah. Seriously. Thanks. Thanks um, that. That. Peril two thousand and seventy seven. Do you prefer Shadow Heart's more heroic redeeming journey, or do you like the more villainous route more? I I mean, I kind of touch on that. I I I, I mean, for me, the 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 heroic one because you know like got a hero savior complex or something no I think we all want to be good right however I did have a lot of fun (laughs) I did have a Uh, lot of fun doing more villainous aspects of her um I didn't find it very difficult which I thought I would maybe I am a secret villain (laughs) maybe I am secretly evil so you, you, know. you thought you were going to struggle with that. But I, yeah, I genuinely thought, oh, I'm going to find that really hard. Yeah. No, I loved it. <laughs> I think maybe, maybe I, like, you know, I keep on protesting about the dark edge uh, and about how I'd never do it. Maybe. Yeah, oh, I'm starting to question that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm starting to question myself. <laughs> starting to question myself. Maybe I do just want to murder everyone. I don't actually, I don't really feel I like I can that, never... I have to go the good path when I play a game for yeah. the first time. I can't bring myself to be the villain until the second or third playthrough. I just there's something I don't know. I just can't. Do I it. feel like that's a lot. Of like like from what from talking to people, I feel like that's generally how it goes. That they'll do a couple of playthroughs and yeah. just try really hard, and then and then just go fuck it. We're gonna <laughs> murder everyone and plot and scheme and be awful. And I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. Much better you yeah. do it in a video game than in real life, right? So, you know. Yep. 100%. Yeah. Uh, Whitehawk, what was your experience with Dungeons & Dragons? Did you have any interest in so D&D? I've always wanted to do it. And I've just, like, I just, ha- just haven't been invited. Um, oh. No, I just, like, oh. like yeah, I know. So I like I've always I've always wanted to do it, and you know I was the kid like I grew up in the middle of nowhere, and I always played imaginary games by myself, and like created these worlds by myself, and I've always loved like I always loved the imaginary play. Like I was that I was that child that was a bit weird, um, in a good way, and I think I've always got this like urge to. I mean that's what probably why one of the many reasons why I'm an actor um and I'd love I'd love to kind of stretch that muscle again outside of work or acting um so yeah I think maybe we need to set one up with all of the origin origin characters or the companions and oh that would go uh, crazy yeah and that would be so much fun oh it would um so yeah, I I'd love I'd love that. So yeah, I I I I'd really like to, and I've kind of always wanted to. Um, yeah. But it's just it's just not happened. So um, yeah, eventually, definitely. Um, but knowing me, I'd get like so invested and emotional about it and cry. I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> just get really drunk or I don't really drink that much but you know I don't know I don't, like, I'm just like worried that I'd get too into it basically. too into it but yeah. yeah yeah favorite line with Lizelle from Jarek 86 for me it was oh. bury the hatchet I don't remember I don't remember, remember that one, one. No. no that's bad 
got Amen. so many. Have I written any down? No. <laughs> um, <laughs> Whenever you ask someone your favorite line, they just they forget. Just, yeah, yeah my brain's goes... just gone. Bye. Yeah, because um, there's so many to choose. There's so many. There's so many. Uh, like it's really tricky because there's like a few memes going around in my head, and I'm like, is that? Is that a line from the? Is that a line from the game? Is that a meme? Um, <laughs> like, like my favorite one at the moment that's going around is, with all due respect, which I have none. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah, I can't. I'm sorry, I've failed that question. You I've, failed. I've shattered it. I've shattered it. There's <laughs> so many. I like. <laughs> but um, yeah. Yeah. No, that's I, right. I love. I love the lazy banter. I love it. It oh, makes me brilliant. really happy. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Walrus says, is Jen's Ooh. girlfriend allowed to romance anyone but Shadowheart in her playthrough? Yes. <laughs> uh, that's, yes. A good, that's a good question. I don't think she would. I don't think she would. I don't know. Carlac's yeah. pretty... I love Carlac. Carlac. Is pretty, no. I like. I think I'll romance Carlac. Um, <laughs> she no. I know. Actually, I think she'd romance Lazel. I think she'd romance oh, Lazel. Really? Yeah. You think there's a connection yeah. there. Yeah. I'm gonna ask her that. No, I no. I'm very. I'm very cool with that. Um. Yeah, I think she'd romance Lazel. We love Deb Deb, so that's okay. She's she's allowed that one. I think I'll romance Carlac though. Um. I'm not gonna romance myself. That would be weird. <laughs> or will I? Yes, you will. Come on. Yeah, I will. <laughs> no, you, have to, you have to. You have to. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I would like to see see them all like play out as I'm playing mm. it. That would be really cool. Maybe one playthrough where I romance myself. Um, and another where I play as myself. Uh, no, no, I want to create a character. Um. But yeah, I think I think Laidel or Carlac, she's allowed. I've yeah, I think her. Neil created a character and he's romancing Astarian, I think, so in his playthrough. Of course he is. Yeah. Of course he is. A star. Neo. A star. Darling. Darling. Um, darling, a star. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Des Destant, how do you feel? Now, after seeing the character you portrayed, is one of the most, if not the most, cherished character of the game by the community. How does it feel? Well, now I want to cry. Um, <laughs> uh, like I can't, oh, I can't quite fathom it. I'm just, I'm just really grateful that she's been understood. I think maybe because at the beginning when we first went on early access and I knew there were depths to her, I just knew that like the prickly side was a front, right? And I'm yeah. like, oh, I just think I don't understand. And I was a bit like, oh God, is everyone going to hate her? Because she's not this like Labrador. Um, mm. Not that there's anything wrong with a Labrador. I no, a no. Labrador. Um, but it's just... It's a little bit mind blowing and a little bit like the best thing in the world. And I'm just uh like again without being too like I'm so humble. Um it is just one of the best things that's ever happened to me. And I'm just so like glad that people have seen it now and that that the work that we put in hasn't been in vain and that people like recognize not just and like it's not just my work in any way at all like I'm one tiny tiny part of this huge operation I mean how many people have invested years of their life slogging on this game um like all the people at Larian, all the people at Pit Stop who record the dialogue and mocap, all the game designers, yeah, animators, game designers, riggers, um, mocap technicians, like, like there's, and then like I've met a, like a tiny amount of them, and they all care so deeply about the game, um, and 
so yeah I'm just just a little bit astounded and like all of the origin characters uh, are loved and in their own different ways from from Karlak being like so this like lovable creature to Minthara and her dark evil ways to Astarian and his like dramatic beauty and lays out like that like everyone is so special and loved by their own like fandoms and but I think also they're kind of loved by everyone as well and I just mm. yeah I'm just so it's just proud just really really proud of it I was gonna say have you ever been this proud about something you've worked on before yeah oh for sure I mean like I've never worked on anything this long for this long before um, and yeah. yeah like like I've been really lucky in that I've done so much theater work that I've been like yeah again like I think I do get invested in pretty much everything I do um and like I'm I, like I wish I could be a bit like oh yeah shit. Uh, um <laughs> you know I don't care no but like, that's, probably that's be a how lot, you should a be a lot more like oh. like less like emotional about things but um yeah like I've done I've done this work that I'm like especially that I'm like so proud of and I'm like was so proud of Elden Ring I mean I was like a tiny oh. part in that but you know it like I was really just like a tiny cog in 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 Elden Ring but like I loved my character's storyline and um I thought that was beautiful and the writing and everything about that game was stunning yeah, yeah and like pretty much every game that I've worked on I'm like yeah I love that but yeah like, yeah I'm I, did uh, I've done a lot of theatre in the past and um again kind of like I fall in love quite easily as a person and with my with my work and with work that I do so like I do kind of I suppose like passionately advocate for the for the characters that I play and I try to only choose characters that I really um feel invested in and obviously there's been points in my career where I've gone like eh, that wasn't my favorite project <laughs> um didn't love that one as much you know yeah but for sure I I like I have been I have been really proud of the work work that I've done and the people that I've worked with really try try to keep in touch with with people and 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 invest in in my friendships with people and stuff and and yeah. like I'm just really lucky that I have worked with a lot of incredibly talented and kind people in my life and and this game is no exception so yeah that's the weird thing though about being an actor you're always getting new friends and then it's sort of like yeah. going to summer camp and then back it home. is like going to summer Isn't camp it? yeah. it's like sometimes it's like a holiday romance but with colleagues and friends <laughs> yeah thank god for for social media because ah. Oh. I like I, like I would I'd be I'd find it so hard to keep in touch with people but like and keeping in touch with ADHD is hard and I'm sure there's people listening watching this that is like that will that have it that agree like that's something I really struggle with um but luckily like a lot of the friends that I've got are insanely patient um, with me and and understanding but yeah you do you do and it's really hard to not go I'm going to be best friends with everyone because that is my instinct. Um, and you have to go, oh no, probably not everyone because you'll be exhausted. Um, yeah. But uh, but saying that, like on this game, like yeah, it, it it's I'm really glad I've got friends from this that are going through this at the same. Like we're all going through this at the same time and you know, able to send each other the memes and um and the reactions and kind of going like, oh, so and so said this about you, look, and you know, everyone's is, so proud is, of each other. <laughs> I know, I know there's a group chat for the um for the companions. It, for the companions. Now is that group chat sort of a meme fest? What are we what are we looking at? Is it a meme fest? No, it, do you know what? It's not. Samantha so Bayart and I send each other um Karlak and uh and Shadow Heart memes and they um they send me a lot of like Tumblr posts and I send them like reactions and stuff. Um 
Dev and I, uh, so me, Adiana and Dev are all in a group chat, which we've called Schnitzel, because Shadow Heart, Lay <laughs> That's um, a good one. Lay Heart is also the other name. Oh, um, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Schnitzel, we send each other a lot of memes, yes. Because yeah. there is a lot of very high quality Shadow it's Heart. so high lay, quality. Lay Heart, lay, lay Heart meme content going on. So yeah, there is a lot of that. Th- there should be more memes. There are some memes in the. But who's chat, making? But not as who much makes as these like. memes though? You know, I've not never me. made a meme. I don't know have how you to ever make. Made a meme? I've never made them. Yeah. I I mean, I'm not I didn't smart enough a... to make one. I'm not smart enough. <laughs> I no. I like if there was like a micro. Is there a Microsoft Paint that I could use? I like. How do people make the memes? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is there a meme you know generator? I mean? Yeah. Probably, there probably is, isn't there? Yeah, probably. I imagine there is. Um, I mean, I did read out. I did read out. Read out a meme as Shallow Heart that it was all, and that went viral. And I was not expecting that. That Adiana put on her Twitter. Um, Millions so, of hits. So you know, yeah. I can read. I can read out the memes, but not create <laughs> the memes. Oh shit! Uh, Hopscotch was this your first oh, motion hopscotch. capture experience? It was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. I've never cool. done it before in my life. That was scary. I was nervous the first day for sure. Um yeah, so I don't think people really know that we mocapped nearly everything. So everything pretty much. There are a few like where we're running through, you know, various places and we're like, ah, statue. Like that's not mocapped. That'll be well, I think it is, but not by us. Um, but like everything pretty much where we speak, that's mocapped. I did the, uh, I reading out the, the meme and people were like, oh, you've got, you've got her head, head tilt. And I'm like, yeah, because I, that's me. It's me. <laughs> the head tilt is me, guys. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't uh. quite understand, but we did, we did all of that mocap. So, yeah. and then of course, Darian and there's a team in Guildford that did it, all the amazing uh, other bits of mocap and I think they did it up in Dublin as well and weirdly Aliana who um uh my girlfriend who was obviously the performance director she did a lot of the mocap with them um as did Neil and Josh Wichard who's one of the um uh the taps so uh, as well as other people um and uh yeah so they would do like the more complicated like stuff technical mm. language again i'm so good at it um so like you know things like like the the rump like proper like set no i know it. what you mean yeah yeah, yeah. not me <laughs> but you know the... everything where i talk me yeah. yeah the sort of i think i think i've represented that right i'm sorry if i've said something wrong so many no, things no, no, where I'm like, right. have i said that right yeah, yeah so i know neil he did um Thanks, when you're selecting the characters at the start, he did sort of the body movements for all the characters. I know that. <laughs> yeah. So there's different. Oh, that's why mine's rubbish. No, I'm joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Neil did loads. And I think he's done bits of Shadowheart. Um, uh, I'm sure he has. I think he's done bits of everyone. Um, yeah. But for the most part, cool. it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Lots of time in a, in a like cat suit with all the bobbles and loads of cameras on you. Deeply uncomfortable and when it's hot is all I'll say. <laughs> Thank I you. Can imagine. I can imagine. I'll give you a few more. I know we're really appreciative of your time, by the well, way, Jen. That's all right. That's fine. You got yeah. Sawyer two four nine. Why did it take till the end of Act Two for you to kiss me? We spent the night together and kissed all the way back in Act One, and we're obviously oh. dating. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> look look uh, i'm sorry um she's she, she doesn't make it easy but then isn't it more rewarding you don't want it to be easy you know not we're not all like gail <laughs> you want to yeah. you want to work a bit you know I, I, hard to get like otherwise you, you're done and then you can just move on to someone else no work it work it work for a bit enjoy enjoy the pain okay 
yeah. enjoy your um what's it called where you've got like your your attachment anxious attachment enjoy your anxious attachment being exploited you know good things don't come easy do they jen yeah yeah no. i don't know i don't know <laughs> severe artisan thanks for the opportunity to ask jen a question my question is what do you like the best what do you like the best about shadow Hut as a character um so many things i love I really love her vulnerability and I think that's where I really enjoyed myself. Those glimmers of of her like figuring herself out and and the inner conflict. And I think you really see that early on, that conflict coming through. I think it, it would be easy to write her off as this, you know, like it, it, it makes me cross when people are like, oh, she's an evil character. Like, she absolutely isn't and you really see that like if you try if you really notice you you see that that isn't the case from the get-go 100 percent, yeah well not quite not quite the get-go maybe oh, a few yeah, hours in. but yeah but you know like like in the t- like with the tiefling massacre and you know hopefully uh, that's probably another spoiler but it's early on so i'm like oh, come on um uh but there's a lot going on um under the surface and those moments where we get to show that um and you know there's always that and that's what made it such a really interesting creative process because it's like how much is she showing here because we could have played it guarded all the way through but what's the right balance yeah what's the right balance and so there was always this this really clever play of of like how much are we showing here where are we at with the player at this point like what's the approval rating at this point like tilly tilly Steele, one of the voice directors is really good at that going right okay the the approval rating is here so i think at this point she's like just friendly enough that she can show this but not too much that she's really obvious about it so we were always really specific and and very like detail orientated in the room um, so that we could get a very like individual approach. So one person's playthrough with Shadowheart is going to be completely different to the other. And that's that's by design, you know, and that's like the writing as well. Um, and and we were always really careful about that because it isn't a one size fits all, just like in life, you know, how I'm going to act with you, Dan, is going to be really different to how, you know, I might be with, Adriana, hopefully, like it would be weird if I was snogging you, but you know what I mean. Like, like, it, like we we have such different relationships with everyone, yeah. and why should that not be the case here? Um, and and that's the beauty of the Dungeons and Dragons world, you know. So that it is different for everyone playing. Um, I've forgotten what the question was. What was it? I've gone on such a tangent now. No, no, it was. Um... Oh shit! Now I've forgotten it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, what was the, que- the, the question was. Oh yeah, what was my favorite part? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I think that that I did go on a tangent really, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> I love tangents. Uh, yeah, I love think, tangents. Yeah, they're encouraged. Then that's that's why we'll be friends forevermore because <laughs> I am a tangent. Um, you are a tangent, okay. I'm a tangent, a <laughs> living tangent. Um, yes, the inner. So, in summary, the the inner conflict, um, yeah. and her wrestling with what her morals are, um, I just found so fascinating. Rue Boyd, Jennifer's Instagram warms my shadow heart, and I can't wait to see what's next in her journey. On that note, are there any roles she would love to play in the future? Um, oh, that's a really uh, thank you. Uh, what was it, rude, rude, rude boy or rude boy? Rude Boyd, I think. Yeah, Roo, a rude Boyd. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, where my I think it's a lot of us as actors will go like, oh, like, and maybe I did this at the beginning. Like, I really want to play Juliet and Romeo and. Juliet. Or I really want to play Lady Macbeth or something. And I think where I've had my best roles and 
the most joy in my career is when I've kind of let the universe kind of go, okay, try this. And it's never been what I've expected. So other than like, you know, period drama children, which is definitely something that's in my like comfort, comfort blanket, like yeah. safe zone. Um, and I'm like, yeah, okay. I don't, I don't mind saying that. But um, like Shadow Heart, I would never have picked for myself. No. Um, and I think that's where I've, I've really enjoyed life the most when I've gone, this is not where I expected it to go. And I think as soon as I grip onto, I want to play these kinds of roles next, then, then I mm. won't, I just won't have as much fun. The universe won't reward me as much. That sounds a bit wee wee, but you know what I mean? Like, I think sometimes when you just let life go a bit and stop, I mean, I need, like, I need to take my own advice here, but. No, but and you also can't control. You can't definitely really control not in our either. career. Yeah. Yeah. No. In... And I don't know if I want to control. Um, Right now, that might change in 10 years' time. Yeah. But at this point, I'm like, cool, what's next? Um, and I don't know what's next. And and for the first time, I'm really okay with that. Usually, I think I'd be freaking the fuck out. But right now, I'm like, yeah. I'm just really enjoying this right now and, and talking to fascinating people and and enjoying the aftermath of this four years of work. Um, so that's okay. Um so in answer, I've got no clue what I want to do next, but I'm very secure in that, you know? That's good. That's actually really good because, yeah, a lot of actors are kind of like, what's the next thing, you know? They can't sort of sit and breathe for a little bit and enjoy the ride, enjoy the aftermath, yeah. as you said. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to enjoy the, the ride for a bit. Um, yeah. I'm sure there'll come a point where I'm like, <laughs> I need a five-year plan. Um, no, but, but right no. now I'm okay. Yeah. Kate Capeter, was there any inspiration for the voice, and how flexible were Larry and when developing the tone and pitch? Thank you so much for the for your work. Oh, thank you, Capeter. Capeter. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you for enjoying it. Um, uh, at first. Shadow Heart had a really different voice, which I'm really glad we didn't stick with because <laughs> I didn't like it. Um, really? And so we did we did play around with her voice quite a lot. So at first she was like a bit deeper and just a bit more serious. And then I think we had a little pause and came back to it and then started to realise that actually she can have a lot more fun and humour. Um, and I think that's where we got a bit more like flexibility in her voice. I've never really thought too much about it because I've just, I think it's far more important as actors that we, um, or it's certainly for me anyway, that we think mainly about what the character wants and what, um, like, yeah, what, what the character wants and how they're going to get it and their relationship with the world around them, the relationship with with the people around them and so this voice just kind of found me rather than me like creating something because I wanted it to feel really genuine and authentic and I wanted it to come from a really natural place rather than like I'm creating Forced. a character which is which is a totally valid way of going about it it's just not for not my way for this role either like because I think in every project I've kind of approached character differently and and tried something different because each story is different and each writer like each writer is different and each director is different so for this but for this one I after a, a little bit of experimentation just just she just kind of came she just like it was just a, a really natural thing which is kind of beautiful actually now I think I haven't really thought about it so thank you Capita for a really really good question um and yeah as I said kind of said earlier the the voice never felt difficult or that I had to like 
remind myself it's yeah. like she just kind of sat in me quite quickly yeah the despite being so different from myself like I feel like she kind of lives somewhere inside of me uh without sounding too too weird about it but yeah so if you um, had to go back let's say and do more work on the character you'd you'd be able to go no problem straight away I hope so. I mean, like, ask me in a year's time. But, yeah, I, I, I think so. But I think I feel like that about a lot of characters I played that I could probably, like, give me, give me, you know, five minutes, half an hour to kind of look at, to really think about it again. But I think they do kind of stick with you. Not all of them. I'm sure some of them I'm like, eh, which one was that? And maybe some of the some of the characters that I played in um, Divinity, I All don't 17. know if I remember. <laughs> I don't think I don't think I'm really counting uh, too many, like the chest or something. Uh, I probably yeah. wouldn't remember which voice I did. But as far as like characters that I've spent longer than you know an hour in a recording studio with, um, yeah, they do kind of sit with you and and stay a part of you which I think is a, a nice way of me for me like now I'm just like kind of exploring this it's like free therapy session um like I'm I feel like yeah I think they they kind of add to who I am as an individual um and that's kind of how I want to see them um that they add something to my life um yeah it's quite beautiful really isn't it well done yeah me. that was a beautiful answer okay. where'd you come up with that thanks you have, that, you have a teleprompter? Yeah, I've got an auto key right there. <laughs> oak enthusiast 90. I am also an oak enthusiast. I love oak trees very oh, much. Sorry, I've, I've, been... st I've stuffed it. It's okay, enthusiast 90, oh. not oak. Yeah, sorry. I got really excited <laughs> about trees. I love oak too, man. I'm, I'm the oak I enthusiast. I love oak trees. Uh, I'll yeah. cut my fingers off for you, Shadow Heart. So not a question, more of a statement. Not sure. Please don't. <laughs> please, please don't maim yourself. That's all I ask. <laughs> Self-care is important. Put yourself first. In any relationship, guys, you've got to come first. Don't maim yourself. This isn't... What's the uh, the Banshees of Inner Sharon? If you've ever I watched haven't that seen film, that. Though, I do want to see it. Okay. Yeah. I might have spoiled it a little bit but there does involve fingers and you know don't don't be don't go down that route guys it's not it's not healthy good movie yeah. that's with uh will uh, i loved oh, it will, not will ferrell. Ferrell. Colin ferrell. Ferrell. yeah oh, will ferrell. i loved it i loved yeah. it and if you liked in bruges then you know it's it's yeah. the same writer and um i think the same director i'm assuming yeah. i think so um, yeah. yeah i think i know i know so it is so I don't know, so now I'm doubting myself. But yeah, go see it. I really loved it. I really loved it. And they have a donkey called Jenny, and you know, I'm called Jenny. So deep connection there. Favorite flower? Obviously, Night Orchid is uh, Shadow Heart's favorite flower. For me, Jen, I love wild flowers. Um, so not not dissimilar because I think you know, a night or orchid is probably. I don't know if it is a wildflower in Boulder's Gate land. Uh, but, uh, yeah, wild, wild flowers for me. I love them. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, and then last one here, is there anything you want people to take away from the character? That's a really good question. What do I want people to take away from the character? That what? first comes to mind when you ask that we're all so complicated and there's so much pain within all of us like I don't know a single person that hasn't like felt something deep or been hurt in some way and I think that that we're all so complicated and so capable of going down different routes in life and that I hope that Shadow Heart represents that that we can go through these very 
heavy, difficult things. And there's always this option to choose something hard and difficult, but to choose the light or that we can go down a different path and choose our own power and to be unapologetic and unafraid of that. And, and either way, I hope that, that through Shadow Heart, we can look at our, look at those sliding doors moments and, and pick what is right for us and make that into the best decision for ourselves. Does that make sense? Mm. (laughs) Talking about unapologetic, that we all have so much capability to be what we want to be and to choose that life path and to feel proud within that, whatever that life path is. This only makes sense if you've played the whole game, just as a caveat. But um, yeah. and you know, Charlie. But I'm assuming if people have got to this point, then they they and are watching that they they have. But you know but, what the tough um, thing is? Some people don't know what their passion is. You know, even as they get on, they still a, you know, and that's okay as well. If you still, that's, I think yeah. that's okay. Yeah. I think there's this such this this pressure of like you must find yeah. this life path and stick to it, and maybe it's okay to not know and it's okay to to experiment and it to explore and and maybe it's more freeing to not have this one vocation maybe maybe that's okay and and maybe there's so much joy to be found in that too no yeah 100 percent. And it, like yeah i don't yeah i i kind of feel like your job doesn't have to define you if you if you don't want it to, you know. Not at all. And maybe yeah. maybe it shouldn't define you. No. Maybe what should define you is is like kindness. Exactly. Or like yeah. you know, like like it's like with the um the whole like there's there's a big narrative at the moment on Snow White and um and whether it's okay because the new the reimagining of snow white at the moment mm. is that she's this like this leader and and like this boss and powerful and 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 i think now like i think it's really important that we went that far and that you know we could show that women or or people who are assigned female at birth can do whatever they want to do but know that being you and and this is something that I'm exploring at the moment as well that just us being us and us trying to do good and trying to be the best versions of ourselves whether that's a huge leader or or not maybe that's totally and utterly brilliant and okay that that we don't need to be anything other than ourselves whatever life throws at us and wherever we find ourselves in life because nothing defines us other than how how kind we are yeah, and how, we how you feel treat people and, yeah yeah so yeah that's something that's in my head at the moment anyway why is that may i ask Maybe because, like, this is a real, uh, like, maybe it's it's because this job and this, like, journey is, is coming to an end. And, um, like, it's very, like, new experience for me to, to suddenly have conversations with people that I've never met before. And, um, you know meeting people that have been affected by the work we've all been doing and you know I'm kind of reassessing my role in the world I think so many of us are and um that have worked on this game and and being visible for the first time and kind of going well it's not my job to to like obviously not to save anyone or to lead anyone but maybe it's enough that 
that I can connect with a few people and and you know share my work with them and and things so you know and that's the first time that I've done that on this scale and I'm finding the whole experience quite beautiful and very touching um touching is the wrong word maybe like emotionally like it's like I'm very emotional about it fulfilling thank you yeah. um yeah it's really it's really fulfilling and not where I thought my life would go and that's okay um very joyous you said that you're a bit of a crybaby or what it, that's how we're only, <laughs> joking, we're only joking around but the um have you actually, you know, reading these messages and everything, have you gotten emotional since the game's gotten out oh, like in your own time? Um, obviously. Dan, we met. Yeah. I've been crying all the time. So is Aliana. <laughs> we read a message. We read a message from someone in the car and she was just dead. Yeah. Like, silent tears rolling down her face. Yeah, we both. Because they like... really open up, don't they, in, in, the, in yeah. these messages. Yeah. Yeah, and which is good because I'm very emotionally open as well. So you know, I'm I'm very up for that. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I really yeah. love you know, and and I'm not here to help. Like you know, I'm not a therapist or and I, but nobody's seen me as that. It's just we've been sharing stories, I suppose, and um, and just been having a very like open, open and honest conversation about things and like I'm always up for that I just like I don't see the point in in guarded like you know ironic that I'm playing a very guarded character but you know I just I don't want to be like British about feelings and kind of pretend they don't exist when of course they do and there should be no shame in having deep feelings about things and and to be affected by things um, we've all been through so much uh, in the past few years, and I like I know very few people that haven't been affected in some way by the pandemic or just by life. Um, and I just don't think we should have a stiff upper lip about it. I, I, like I'm not here for that, and I think that really affects my work, and in a good way, I hope, because like I don't think I could access that part of myself if I hid it in real life you know like I think it like it it helps with the emotions of things um and the emotional availability of the characters I play and that's all I ask for really so yeah I like yay emotions <laughs> well, um yay feelings thank you for being so open with us today I I really appreciate oh, it pleasure. and uh, I think people are really going to take a lot from this chat. I'm. Is there anything you wanted to say to the fans? Where to begin? <laughs> thank <laughs> Deep you. breath. <laughs> Not honestly, yeah. like, thank you. Um, thank you for being the kindest, most generous, friendliest, most loving group of people I've I, that like it feels like I don't want to be too I don't want it to sound disingenuous but it feels like I've got a new family um not to replace my old family I love my family but it feels like a family and like I feel nothing but like it, it feels like open arms and um yeah my heart is so full and uh, yeah and and just just thank you thank you from the bottom of my heart and and I'm so glad I'm so glad that that Shadow Heart and that Baldur's Gate 3 has has made so many people so happy it's all it's all we could ask for really um yeah and thank you for a spectacular performance if you're not nominated I'll be having <laughs> stern words with a few people <laughs> Thank you. Thank uh, you I, so I think this game has to win game of the year. That's just me. But um, yeah, who knows? Who knows? I mean, at the who end of the day, it's just an award show. It's just an award show. It doesn't yeah. it's not the be all end all. And but, um, it, it's people enjoying it and and yeah. people getting a lot out of it. That's, that's 
what we want, not the shiny accolades. Exactly. So they are nice, I'm sure, but you know, um, yeah, it, yeah. So finally, uh, follow you TikTok, Instagram, and Cameo, right? Yeah, I'm, all, I'm Jennifer Jennifer J English on all of those. Yeah, and then uh, I'm not on Twitter, but my girlfriend is. Uh, she's follow your like, girlfriend, Aliana, yep. but I never follow my girlfriend. She's lovely, and she uh, <laughs> she'll talk to you. She's very chatty. Um, what she? <laughs> hang on, what's she on Twitter? Yeah, she. Is... So Aliana Baranova one, and uh, she she's on there and is an incredible performer actor in her own right, and plays Karina the squirrel in the game. Not the oh, squirrel, yeah, nice. but another one, the sassy yeah. one. So you know, that's cool. Um, uh, but yeah, it's been so fucking lovely to chat to you. I've had ah, a really great time. Me too. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I am, so um, as I let you go, can Shadowheart say something to Dan to wrap this one up? Dan, Shadowheart approves. Right. It's fantastic. I, I sort of just, did you see me? I just sort of got lost in the performance. <laughs> I sort of just went a bit, sort of got lost there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank, thank you, you so very much, much. i really appreciate it